Hey, I'm Alistair Lowe, I'm a game developer, I run low-tech games, and I am very dyslexic. This has been a problem in the past while playing games, but I'm here today to make you more aware of the issues dyslexics face, and a few things you can do to be more accessible for the people like me. The definition of dyslexia changes depending on who you ask, but the way it's usually diagnosed is that they do an IQ test and then compare your values to a baseline. They're looking for spikes in specific areas and a general baseline along the rest. I was diagnosed very early in school, but not everybody's that lucky. It's estimated that one in five people are dyslexic. If we compare that to color blindness or visual impairment, we'll see that it affects a whole lot more people, but it's often overlooked. First, we're gonna look at a quick history of text in games. In the beginning, there was only text. Games like Zork played on command lines. Text-based adventures are a dyslexic's worst nightmare. Then we move into the 8-bit era, where they focus more on gameplay and less on story. This is my favourite time in video gaming. Moving into 16 bits, games had more memory for rich lore and story alongside gameplay, but this meant that I skipped and missed half the experience. The 64 bit era focused more on 3D geometry, but still had space for a whole bunch of deep lore in text form. There were a few voice acted games in this era, but it wasn't the norm, especially not for the whole game. In the sixth generation, there was a trend to have the first half hour voiced and then the rest text boxes. In modern times, systems have got a lot more powerful, which has led to a whole lot more voice active games. But there are still many elements in games which are not voiced, such as item descriptions and quest objectives. In the indie scene, we've definitely started seeing a lot more text. Since dyslexia is reading and writing difficulties, and games don't usually have that much writing involved, we can focus on the reading part. We face challenges with time pressure, decoding of text, and comprehension. To highlight these, I made a game called A Familiar Fairy Tale Dyslexic Text-Based Adventure. It's free on Android and designed to simulate the frustration that comes with reading as a dyslexic player. I made it hard to read, like on this tutorial page. The hardest word to read on this page is literally the word easy. Then I hit you with a multiple choice and a timer. This is to reference story-based games like the Telltale games. These time sections are designed for people who can read and to make them feel stressed. So dyslexics really don't have a chance. They do a good job at reducing the amount of text that you have to read, but it's still hard to do under the time pressure. Some people say it's easy to fix, it's just a colour overlay or one of those dyslexic fonts. These are more to do with scotopic sensitivity or Erlen syndrome rather than dyslexia, but they often do come hand in hand. So first let's look at fonts. There's a few of these fonts, open dyslexia, dyslexia. In my experience, these fonts don't help me. And I'm not the only one. There have been a few studies shown that these have little to no effect and some people make it worse. The difference in line thickness really causes me some visual stress and makes it harder to read. I have heard that it works for some people, but it's not a universal fix. When picking a font, just go for a nice sans serif font with as close to a consistent line width as you can get. If you see people saying that they can read better with this font and they're not dyslexic, it's maybe just a case that you need to change your font in your game. Text is there to portray information and if it's not doing that, you need to change it. Colour overlays, on the other hand, do keep the letters from moving in my eyes. By reducing the contrast, it does help stabilise the image for some people. That brings me to high contrast mode. This works for some people too, but as I just said, uh, we want to reduce the contrast, not increase it. And this is where it gets really annoying, because visually impaired people do like the increase in contrast. So by helping one group, you may be hindering another. But with all that being said, I think there is a golden bullet in it as text-to-speech. When I learned about text-to-speech, it completely changed the way that I live my life. I just select the text and then get the computer to read it for me. Hello world. I added it to a familiar fairy tale. And it's night and day. It's the difference between being able to enjoy the story and struggling through decoding text. So for your game, you could go fully voiced, but that's expensive and not always in budget for indie games. You can write a text-to-speech wrapper for each operating system because most have them built in uh, on PC and mobile at least. The consoles are still kind of playing catch up, but it is getting better. Or you can run it through a text-to-speech tool and save the output. Do make sure to read the license agreement for any of these text-to-speech tools. Having the ability to pause your game to read stuff is always a good option, or a way to disable time-sensitive elements. Be aware that you can do large text drops, but they do get boring pretty quickly. People that use screen readers are used to having it read really fast, so you have to give the option to be able to turn it up to speed 11. So a variable speed slider would be nice. One game that I think does this really well is Bioshock with its audio logs. They let you get the lower drop while continuing to play the game. Text-to-speech can be used for this too. You can simply set it to play and then let the player continue playing. You may need some kind of way to stop this clash in your cutscenes, whether you have a pause button just for the accessibility stuff or build in some kind of trigger that doesn't trigger until the audio is stopped. One thing I've been thinking about recently is a dyslexia localization skew. So this would summarize all of the text and just tell you the bits that you need to know. And then for characters that say nothing, you'd have some kind of safe word that TLDR and use that phrase consistently to let the player know that this character has nothing to do with the rest of the story. In conclusion, use a sans serif font, 
Don't use all caps for large pieces of text. Headings are okay, and if you can, have the game voice acted or text to speech. For some indie teams, accessibility is the bottom of the list, unless someone on the team is championing something close to them. Accessibility is a huge topic and it's hard to accommodate everyone. Sometimes solutions for some groups make it worse for others. My takeaway from this is not every game needs to be for everyone, but we probably shouldn't exclude anyone intentionally. Anyway, that's it for me. I hope this has helped and keep making awesome games. See yous. Bye.